So our, our story is Quidditch. We basically, uh, a lot of you would be interested in this. We literally started off as a college project. Uh, the college that Sanat mentioned earlier, we were at the Young India Fellowship, which is a liberal arts course where we were just doing one years of liberal arts. And, uh, you know, I had studied film myself and, you know, we were trying to figure out what can we do with this nine months. It was called an experiential learning module. And uh, my roommate at that point said, you know, you've got this drone. I, I was doing filmmaking before that and I had bought this small drone to just, you know, test out what we can do. And uh, he's like, you know, let's try this out. And I was like, you know, entrepreneurship's not really my thing because, you know, I'd sort of grown up in a family that had always been, uh, grandparents were in, you know, the army and the Navy. And, you know, it was always, business was a kind of a bad word in our house because it was always people doing, you know, wrong things to make money. So, you know, entrepreneurship and business wasn't, wasn't what I really wanted to do. But my roommates like, you know, we've got nine months over here in the course. Let's give it a shot. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, you know, we'll just carry on with life uh, as, as we were before. So it was really a, an experiment during college that we started off. And at that time, we just had one drone and we had no idea, you know, where the business is going to really take us. So, you know, we started this off and uh, just experimented, experimented and experimented. So... And in the nine months, we didn't get too much traction, but on the ninth month of the course, which was literally the last, last month that we were there, we got this one contract. Uh, we got uh, called by Gateway Group, which is uh, the guys who do Ajstak and Headlines today at the time. And this was the 2014 elections. And they said, you know, we've got this big bus that you see on the right of your screen. We, we're, you know, Dilip Chabri has designed this bus. So, you know, you've got this new technology. Can you go to Pune and just shoot the bus coming out of the Dilip Chabri uh, factory? So we, we went to Pune and we took some shots. And then, uh, you know, because we were filmmakers and we were creatives ourselves, we said, hey, let's do something new. So we, we told the anchor, we were like, you know, why don't you get on top of the bus and we'll do, while the bus is moving, we'll do a moving piece to camera, which is the, the, the anchor talking on, on camera while the bus is moving. And we sent this footage back to Ajstak and they played it on air and it was an instant hit. They, they loved it. So from a one day contract that suddenly turned into a 40 day contract, we actually traveled on this bus all over the country from the Amethis to Gujarat to Rajasthan, all over the country, 40 days we were traveling on this bus. Uh, with our drone and sending live images of, as you can see on the left, you've got the, then the, he was elected chief minister that year, Akhil Yadav, we flew on top of uh, a lot of these uh, uh, political rallies. So, you know, we were in Banaras when uh, the Amadmi party was there and, you know, really got to understand one major thing, which is the fact that drones are here to stay and they have some great value with what we're doing. Uh, having said all of that, we still had no idea what, what we were doing. We had sort of just found a niche. We knew there was a gap. We knew we were replacing helicopters because obviously the only other way to get these kind of shots were to use helicopters and we were replacing that. But we had no real idea where we were going, no business plan, no future projections. We were just really simply excited about what we were doing because as you can tell, this, is, this was cool. This was you know, really good fun to be, to be involved in working with new business and new technology and digital transformation is that you just don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Uh, and you know, th th this is the thing with, with new technology that you've just got to keep on trying. And as you try and as you experiment, you keep, you know, ironing out your business model and you keep figuring out what really you can do and what you can't do. This is not what, you know, the general story was we started in 2014, uh, 2015, we started doing more than just film and, and, you know, these experiments and these stunts. We started doing things in mining where we were mapping with, with the drone. We were mapping telecom towers. We started doing oil and gas projects. Uh, and somebody is really scribbling on the screen. I don't know what this is, but um, I will still carry on. Um, in 2016, we, we then grew, a, grew into an in-house team where we started working on a lot of software and a lot of GIS. Uh, and then we realized that, you know, uh, one of the most important realizations that happened in the last, uh, you know, uh, five years, which was that we really, really needed to focus with what we were doing. Because we, had, we were a small team at this point in 2016, we were just 10 people. And, you know, we had spread into so many different industries and so many different geographies that, you know, we had no control over anything anymore. 
so we decided in 2017 to really focus back into what was our core which was which was filming and broadcast and you know that is really where things have got gotten very very focused for us where we've come back to doing cinematography which is a lot of the bollywood films that you see so whether it's sanju gali boy Dhamastra, which is coming out, or if you've seen Hotstar, which is very popular these days, uh, sorry, Special Ops on Hotstar, which is very popular these days, all of the drone shots across that uh, we've done. And what we then ended up doing was, was taking drones into broadcast, which is a lot of... Um, uh, Interrupt you, uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, just, I think it's one of the participants who is scribbling. Uh, we're trying to trace it if... If any of you are doing it either unintentionally or intentionally, I uh, would request you to stop it because it's it's uh, disrupting the flow. Sorry about that, Rana. Please. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So, um, just getting back into the flow. So yeah. So we we then start doing a lot of broadcast work, which is uh, if you watch uh, cricket or kabaddi or the ISL, a lot of the drone shots that we do for uh, any of the series that you're seeing in India, whether it's the India series that happened uh, or uh, the IPL, we've been flying our drones. But just flying the drone wasn't, you know, wasn't, uh, a lot of people can do that now. Drones have become, over the last 8-10 years, drones have become fairly accessible, fairly reasonably priced. Um, so we kind of decided to build a layer of technology on top, which was augmented reality. And I'll show you some clips from that uh, further ahead. But augmented reality is what allowed us to now really spend our time focusing an Indian company to be able to scale our services globally, because we are the only company in the world that can now take the drone image, put, put a, a graphic on top, which could be live graphics, uh, you know, things like the score, things like, uh, you know, special stories of somebody like a Virat Kohli, if he's hit a hundred, you know, what is his historic, this thing being like, so all of those things we can now do live on drone footage. And I'll show you slightly later what, what that looks like. And now the entire business is really about scaling this operation as an in company to the globe. So the, you know, last year and this year, we've really been focusing on that. So, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, we sent a team of 15 people to Australia to cover the entire um, women's world cup that was happening there. We had, we were doing the drone, we were doing the augmented reality. We also now have a small remote controlled car that you will see further ahead, uh, which kind of goes around the stadium. So we've just used, you know, the, the whole idea of being able to use, uh, this technology in, in a very interesting application is what, what we've been able to do. Um, and you know, it's, we've, we've had the luxury because we were a business that, you know, spent about two years in, in, in between just trying to discover from 2015 and 16, we were just trying to discover what we can really do. So we actually had the luxury of being able to do a lot of these businesses and a lot of these, you know, actually go out and work with the police on surveillance. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We've sent phones into Pili uh, with, with the forest department to track down a many tiger. Uh, we've sent drones during uh, disaster response for the Nepal earthquake that happened and we were able to do some really, I'm going to talk, you know, really short stories about each of these, but it's, it's really incredible because during the Nepal earthquake, we had sent uh, a team there and, you know, we were in, we were in this valley called Sindhupal Chowk uh, and we were just flying the drone, getting some nice visuals. And, you know, one of these villagers came to us and they're like, you know, there's a village up there. Can you send the drone up there? And we were like, what happened? Uh, and they said, that, you know, that's actually a village that's about eight hours on foot. There's no uh, cars that go up there. So it's been three days since the earthquake has happened, but nobody's been able to check what's going on over there. So can you just send the drone? And, uh, you know, it was an application that I never thought of, but within a few seconds, the drone had reached up there because, you know, line of sight, it was only, uh, you know, a 40 second or a 50 second flight to get to a point which is actually an eight hour walk. And suddenly we could see the entire level of destruction, how many houses had been brought down, how many people were out on the street. And then we were just from that one valley, we were able to do the same thing for four or five different villages. So, you know, a small application like that, we were able to use that footage and, you know, support a lot of other people, uh, the, the people on the ground who were actually doing um, the ground support and use that visuals to be able to take decisions on, you know, where, where they should be looking at next. And, you know, small use cases like that, which at the time we'd never even thought of today are, are really disaster response task forces that we built uh, to be able to do that. 
Uh, what is what is the key story? Why why are drones suddenly so exciting? Why does suddenly everybody want to use drones? What is what is all of this fuss? And really, the few keywords that I've got up uh, up on the screen right now are uh, the few key things um, that that the drones offer. They're really fast, so they get from one point to another really really fast. Uh, you know, just to give you an example, in a city like Mumbai, to get from a place like Kolaba to Andheri. Uh, in a car typically would take you at least one hour to do uh, because you know the traffic and the roads and and so on and most of the cities that we uh, in urban india that we live in the traffic is a bad uh, situation but the moment i say i want to take a blood sang sample from andheri and drop it in a in a hospital in in kolaba on the drone it's not going to take you more than 10 minutes uh, and and if if we want to do it even faster, we can go down to something like five minutes if we take it uh, really fast. We're able to reach inaccessible areas. So if you do a Google search and you say drones inaccessible areas, you'll see drones going into volcanoes where people and researchers have never been able to go before. Uh, in disaster times, you know if there's if there's been an earthquake and you want to go to places that you can't climb, the drone instantly goes. The example I told you of Nepal, that's another very simple a similar example. They are very safe because you don't have somebody sitting on them. So when you're doing a windmill inspection, for example, typically you had to, or, or even the cell phone tower ex example that I gave earlier, typically to do that inspection, a human being had to climb up there. Uh, and the risk of that human being falling down was a real risk because there were almost 100 deaths every year with people falling down from the tower. Now suddenly you just send this drone up, the worst that's going to happen is that the drone is going to crash. So, you know, one or two lakhs of cost versus actually losing a life. One most important one is the regulation. Uh, and I never realized how big a problem this is going to be. Uh, but the fact is that uh, drones are, uh, you know, as, as advantages and as many applications as they have, they can be misused as well. Um, and, and that misuse is what the, the, the authorities need to try and work, work towards to be able to avoid. So because of that, India has been trying really hard to come out with a good regulation the cost of these drones go up. So when you start off, they start at something like 20,000, 30,000 rupees, which is okay if you end up crashing it when you're learning it. Uh, but today we've reached a point where we are flying drones that are 40 lakhs and 50 lakhs when we are flying the really big drones for the film industry. And to crash a drone like that, you know, and we've been through situations like that is, is literally a life and death situation for a company um, that is just, you know, that is bootstrapped and started off. So, you know, that's, that's quite a challenge that we learned. Um, in terms of the few questions that I see right in, uh, in front right now, there are a few licenses that, that are required at the moment. But as, as RN has mentioned, DGCA is currently working on that, where you will be able to go onto their website, apply for a drone license, apply for an operator's permit, and then be allowed to, allowed to fly. Things that the industry can still do together. And the Drone Federation is something that we set up along with three, four other companies about three years ago. Uh, which is an industry body. So we've got together a whole bunch of drone pilots uh, and you can see that number up there. So there are lots of people doing this already. Uh, so for all you tech enthusiasts uh, on the webinar, uh, you know, this is something that is, is now a serious business that you can seriously get into. And the more you learn, people are, you know, earning money out of just being, just flying drones in different parts of the country. Uh, so we got all of these people together and the Drone Federation is really something that deals with a lot of these questions that are coming up about regulation, where we support all of these operators and these companies to be able to, you know, talk to the government and get the regulation to a working point. Where we're all stuck at home and, you know, uh, my company Quidditch literally has come down to zero revenue because there are no sporting events, there are no film shoots that are happening. We've really been able to use the Drone Federation as a platform to bring these drone pilots together to be able to do something that's really nice and impactful. And that for me is a, is a really, really powerful place that we've been able to bring and use drone technology. Um, what we're doing now with drones is, if you look at the map, you can see the map of Mumbai in front of you. And what we've done is across Mumbai, we've got all these green dots that you see. We've got drone pilots that have registered with, uh, with us. Yes, you would have seen this in the news last few days. Uh, in Delhi and Mumbai, we've been we've been covered quite a bit in the news because because of these efforts that we've done. But what we've got, what you see in front of you, is is 50 different spots across Mumbai 
where we've got drones flying from people's terraces. These are either volunteers or people who engage with us, uh, professional pilots that are flying from their city, uh, from, their, from their rooftop and being able to get to different parts and see where people are crowding. We've created a front end platform for the, for the police in Mumbai to be able to look at these images, immediately send them on one click, they can send that image to the local special in inspector or SHO and they can suddenly see on, on the image on the left, you can suddenly see in a place, uh, I think this was in Malad West, where people were just playing cricket. And you know, this is in, during the times of lockdown, this is the last thing that all of us want. So these drones are being able to get to those points, immediately send a report back to the police as the first eyes on the ground and being able to help the police take that action. Uh, and the more intelligence we as human beings and we as entrepreneurs and we as uh, you know, uh, academics are able to give intelligence to the drone, they become more and more intelligent. So for example, a drone that, that currently has no intelligence uh, can tomorrow still have intelligence because what you would do is you would send it out and the feed that is coming from it, you would be able to tell it to be able to detect people or not. So somebody out of Gujarat, uh, a, a gentleman called Nikhil Methia has been working with a company in Australia during this COVID time and they've been able to come out with a small algorithm which is able to detect human beings and measure the distance between them. So immediately it flags up whether social distancing is being maintained or not, which I thought was a very interesting application. We're going to be in a situation where even in India, we're going to see these drone ports that will come up and these big drones that are completely autonomous, driverless, picking you up and dropping you somewhere else in a matter of minutes. So the Mumbai map that you see going from the top of Mumbai to the bottom of Mumbai in, in 20 to 30 minutes will not be uh, something that's impossible. The technology is already there. It's really going to be about regulation and operationalization uh, that, that is going to take us there. And if you search for something called Uber Elevate, uh, you'll understand that I'm not talking, you know, something which is science fiction. This is all real. This is stuff that's happening human transport is going to be the next big evolution that, that we see with, with this technology that we're all talking about today. Uh, key learnings, focus. Uh, one of the big thing, biggest things we learned is, is to narrow your focus because any, something with new technology gets you so uh, lost and so you know, excited every day that is very easy, easy to get lost doing 100 things and which is where we got lost doing, you know, 20 different applications of drones, but the way you need to do business is really to focus down. Once you've got one business sorted, then you focus on the next and the next and the next. Uh, and that's one of the key takeaways. And somebody asked about augmented reality. I will show you a video in a bit that talks about what that means and how we focused on something, making us the only company in the world right now that can offer a piece of technology, making us really uh, hireable across the globe. Passion was a very, very important thing. We were doing all of these land mapping projects and you know, road uh, progress monitoring and all of those things, which sound really cool and were really big scale and all of that. But we realized very quickly that it didn't have our hearts and soul in it. We were not passionate about it. Today, my co-founder Gaurav and myself drive our company with extreme passion. He's extremely passionate about sport and we do almost 50% of our work is, is on the field. Our teams sit on the dugout, right next to the dugout when we operate our equipment uh, on all of the IPL matches. So, you know, he gets his passion from there. My passion was about filmmaking and, and broadcast. And, you know, I get my passion very obviously from that. Uh, planning in these, in these situations has been one of the key learnings as well. Uh, because, you know, without being able to plan uh, what you're doing, initially we've started with no plan and no business model and all of those things that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's again, very exciting to do that, but the sooner you're able to start narrow things down and plan them, uh, they become a lot easier for any of you who are aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, just to show you, uh, you know, what it means to experiment. Uh, this is something that uh, a piece of technology that we innovated from drones to a ground based drone and then found out that, oh, the next thing is that Konmane Karodhati is using it. Okay. And somebody is saying there's a video glitch, so I'm going to skip forward, but basically this is a small buggy system and the next shot you will see what what we're able to do Thank with it very much.
So the opening shot of Kwan Banega Karodpati just ended up being a shot that Quidditch was doing with with uh, our buggy systems, and it's really exciting to just take an idea that was such an early stage idea and and be in one of the coolest shows uh, that is that is possible out there. Um, <clears throat> these are some interesting projects that we've done. That's Rajkumar Hirani right in front of you. Uh, so the opening shot for Sanju, it becomes a beautiful tool for storytelling in in films because suddenly you can see the whole landscape and 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 the whole city. Uh, this is one of the ads that we did with uh, Rajkumar Hirani. <laughs> And all of those shots that you see are from a drone, uh, and there was no other way to tell that story. This is a shot from Gully Boy. You know, the opening of of the trailer when it came out, we actually flew through the buildings to be able to reveal the city. Uh, and I'm just going to skip through this. This is the bit that is about augmented reality, and I think this is really quite exciting with what we've been able to do with it. So this is during the hockey World Cup. We were able to project on top of the screen, you know, the lineup, the score. That's the trophy coming out of the stadium. Um, you know, so things that are traditionally not possible on a normal drone, we've suddenly made them. This is for kabaddi, the different teams that were there. So you know, you're able to tell stories of a city in a very, very different manner. So that's the team lineup. On the Mankade Stadium, that's the live score. So the beauty about the augmented reality is that we've done an integration with the live. Sorry, are you saying something, Sanal? Nothing. Okay. So the beauty about augmented reality in a live scenario is is the fact that you can integrate live data into it. So, uh what you saw last which was the scores and the runs we've connected it to a, a live uh, scoring application and as soon as you know the score changes it automatically updates over there so you know if you decide you want to do it and you want to learn something i can guarantee you that from now to the end of the lockdown if you make the effort you can learn how to fly a drone without even having a drone in your hand uh that's how powerful the power of the internet is today if we really work hard and we decide we want to do something that's how you do it <laughs> 